Today we're going to find a way to sync your music with the new simulation notes in Blender to create an effect like this. So let's get started by going into geometry nodes and we're going to put the geometry nodes on this cube. So click on new to create a new geometry nodes. We don't need the group input. So we're going to delete that and we're going to replace this by pressing shift A and do a curve circle. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to make the points shoot out of this circle. So let's convert the circle to points with a curve to points node like this. You can set the count on like 100 or something like that so that we have 100 points over here. And now let's simulate that we push these points out of this circle. So let's add in a simulation zone. Move that over there. And to make them push outwards, we first want to do a set position node. Connect that in the middle and we want to create like an initial velocity so that these things can actually move. So let's click on the simulation input, press N to make this pop up open, click on plus to insert a new attribute and name this new attribute velocity. We don't want this to be geometry data. We want this to be vector data. Now, if we connect the velocity with the offset, but also with the end velocity like this, so that it goes like in a loop, then you see if you press play, nothing happens. We want to make the initial velocity over here. We want to make that the normal direction of each point. And we have that data over here in the curve to points node. So if we connect the normal with the velocity and we now press play, boom, it will be pushed out. But now we're only having like one circle of points that is pushed out. I want to have a constant flow of new points that are pushing out of the circle. So to do this, we want to add in a join geometry node and every frame, we need to add a new curve to points to the simulation. So we connect it like this and then you will see, okay, yeah, it's kind of working, but those new points you see, they are not moving. That's because the initial velocity only counts for the beginning geometry and not for the points that are added in later. To push out new points as well, we want to add in a vector math node and we want to add the normal data to the velocity of each new point. And then we're getting this. Now it's actually getting pushed out. If you want the velocity of each point to be a little bit slower, you can add in like a vector math node, place that over here and set this from add to scale and then scale it down to like 0.4 or something like that. And then you're getting slower or like a less distance between the circles. If you want the beginning radius of each circle to be a little bit lower, you can set in the curved circle, the radius to be lower, like 0.01 or something like that. And then you will see it starts from there. What we're having now is that each point stays in the viewport like forever. It doesn't die or something like that. It doesn't get removed. We want that. And in order to do that, we want to track the age of each point. So in the simulation input, we're going to add in a new attribute like this. And we're going to name this H. And this H value should not be geometry. This should be a integer. So let's set this on integer. And we want that the H starts at zero and each frame, the H should go up by one for each point. So let's do that by adding in a math node. Let's keep this on add and connect the H to this. And we want to add one each frame and then connect the add node to the end H. However, this is not really working yet. This is not really tracking the H of each point yet because we actually have to capture the H of each point with a capture attribute node. So if we do a capture attribute node and we set that after the set position, we can set this from float to integer and then we connect the h attribute to this value because we want to capture that from each point. And then this attribute socket, we connect that with the add over there. And now it will actually track the h of each point. What we can say now is, okay, if the h is higher than a certain value, we want to delete the point. So let's add in a delete geometry node place that over here before the join geometry. And as the selection, we want to do a compare node because with this compare node, we can check if the H is higher than a certain value. Set this from float to integer and then connect the H to value A. And then we can say, okay, if the H is higher than 20 frames, for example, delete the point. Now let's actually do something with music. So, First thing we're going to do is we're going to make it that when we press play, we actually hear our music in Blender. 
To do this, go over here and add in a video editing tab. And then in this video editing tab, you can add in your song. So if you press shift A on the timeline and you do sound, then you can add in your song. I'm going with this song. For this example, I really like this song because it really has this high contrast in like in volume. And then we see when we press play, music starts. However, our simulation is not reacting to the music yet. What I think would be cool is that there are two parts that are going to react to the music. The Z location of each point and also the radius of each point so that it becomes thicker when the music becomes more intense. To combine the music with the simulation, I like to import an empty which I can easily reference inside of the geometry nodes. So let's press Shift A and import an empty plane axis. And this empty, and we're going to animate it. So let's press I to insert a location keyframe for this empty. Then we're getting a keyframe over here. Now I'm going to take this field over here and I'm going to switch this to the graph editor. And what I want to do is for this empty, let's go into the Z location and I want to sync it with our music. To do this, go into channel over here and then we have bake sound to F curves. If you click on that, then you can search for your music and then you're getting this. Then you see it's not mixed up. I forgot that we have to put this keyframe, we have to put that at the beginning of the timeline. So let's press Ctrl Z so that we haven't baked the music anymore. And let's move this keyframe to frame one. Then go back and do the channel bake sound to F curves and bake it again. And now you will see it works. Cool, let's now reference this empty in our geometry nodes. So let's go back into our geometry nodes and let's drag in our empty into our geometry nodes. Let's first make it that the Z location of the points is the same as the Z location of the empty. So let's put our curve circle over here and let's add in a set position node. And let's connect the location of the empty into the offset of the set position. And now if we press play, see that works pretty well. If you think that the effect is a bit too extreme and you want the points to not go like too high, you can scale down the location vector of this empty by adding in a vector math node. And let's set this from add to scale and you can set this like on a scale of 0.5 for example. Now let's make it that the Z location of the empty affects the actual radius of each point. And let's do that by adding in a set point radius node. And what I want to do is if you have the Node Wrangler add-on, you can do shift and right click and combine these lines together so that you can easily put the point radius node over here. And then you see if you set the radius on like one, the points will be way bigger already. But we want this to be dependent on the location, on the Z location of the empty. So to get the Z location of the empty, let's do a separate XYZ node and let's connect location with vector. And now if you connect the Z value into the radius, then it is like this. Now don't worry that the big ones are too big. Later this will be fixed when we're actually going to replace these points with an icosphere, for example. Talking about replacing it with icospheres, let's actually do that. So let's go to the end of our geometry nodes and let's add in an instance on points nodes like this. And as the instance, we want to have an icosphere. Connect that over here, and then every point is replaced by an icosphere. However, the scaling of each icosphere is the same at the moment, and I don't want that. I want the scaling of each thing to be the same as the radius of each point that we set it earlier. So let's do this by adding in a radius attribute, and we can just connect this with the scaling, like this. And from here, if you want to make the bigger ones like smaller, you can add in a map range node, and then you can set this to max value lower so that you're having more control over how big are the bigger ones and how small are the smaller ones. You can set the amount of subdivisions of the icosphere on two. There's actually a third thing that I want to be synced with the music, which is the color of each particle. So we're going to create a material for it. So let's split our screen in half like this and let's change this to the shader editor. And let's also go into material preview mode. Let's remove the principal BSDF and let's replace this with an emission texture. And now if I change the color of this emission, you see, yeah, it doesn't change it on the actual mesh. So what we want to do is we want to do a set material in the geometry nodes. And then you can set this material that we're creating and then it works. 
Now what we kind of want is we want to have the radius data of each point inside of the materials. And we can get this by kind of like saving the radius as an attribute that we can use outside of geometry nodes. To do this, add in a store named attribute over here. The attribute that we want to store is the radius. So let's connect that with value. And the name of this attribute, we're going to name that like point radius or something like that. And now if you press shift A in the shader editor and you do an attribute node and you connect this with the color of the emission and the name of the attribute is point radius, then you see it doesn't work. That's because these balls are still seen as instances and we have to realize those with a realize instances and then it actually works. Then you see the bigger ones are like brighter and the smaller ones are darker which is good because now we can say with a color ramp, we can change the color of this to be like, okay, let's say that the smaller ones should be blue and the bigger ones should be, should be kind of like red, purple ish, something like that. And maybe in the middle of that, it should be like green. Let's see what we can do. Yeah. Something like that. That's cool. And now we're getting this. After playing around for a while with this effect, I found a really cool effect and that is to not make these icospheres like fully emissive but to make it like a little bit different that each point becomes like a ball of glass with an emission icosphere inside of it that creates a really cool effect so let's try to create that and we're going to create this by taking these four nodes and shift d them to duplicate them now you can connect the store attribute also in the instance on points and let's also go into solid view mode so that we can actually see what we're doing let's add in a join geometry node so that we can join these two together and let's connect that with the group output and you see okay yeah we have to connect the map range node over here as well with the scaling now the scaling is perfectly the same but i want that the scaling of the points that are like inside of it to be a third of the scaling of the actual glass ball so let's press shift a and do a math node and connect that over here set this from add to divide and let's set the value on three so that each emission icosphere will be a third of the scaling of each glass icosphere now to make the glass look as realistic as possible, I want to create that the glass is not like fully solid, but that it's like a small layer with air inside of it and that emission icosphere, of course. To create this, we want to extrude this mesh. So let's take it like this and let's add in an extrude mesh node and turn off individual so that we're doing like a whole mesh combined. Set the offset scaling a bit smaller, like point. 0.1 or something like that and now we want to join this with the previous mesh so take this join geometry shift d put it over there connect the instance on points with the join geometry and then you see we're getting like a little layer and you can control the thickness of this layer with the offset scaling in the extrude mesh however the inner layer is now also pointing like outwards the normals are going outwards and we have to flip those in order to make it realistic so let's do a flip faces node and connect that over there okay if we now go into material preview mode then you see oh yeah we didn't do the glass material yet so let's create a glass material by removing this one over here click on new name this like glass and let's replace the principal BSDF with a glass BSDF connected with the surface of the material output. And now in the set material for the outer layer, we can replace material with glass. Then we're having glass. You can still see the hard edges and faces in this. I don't like that. So let's do a set shade smooth after the joint geometry so that it looks smooth. Now to actually see through the glass, I like to just go into cycles. So let's go into render view mode let's go into render properties and change the render engine from ev to cycles and change the device from cpu to gpu compute and then you see we're getting this effect which looks pretty cool if you add in like a plane for example and you make that bigger and i remove the light that i have over here in this scene now for the emission material if i make the strength of the emission like 10 for example then you see we're getting a really nice glowing effect and still, if we press play, it still works. If you're seeing that your animation is kind of like delayed and it's not synced up with your music anymore, like I have right now, what you can do is set the playback over here to sync to audio so that it will sometimes drop frames when it's like not synced with the audio anymore. 
and now you will see that problem is gone. So there we have our way to mix our music with the new simulation notes in Blender. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, comment down below if you have any questions, and if you want to help out the channel and you don't want to miss out on any future videos, please consider subscribing. And with that being said, I see you in the next one.